What is going on guys, my name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. Hope it's not the first time that you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'll give you guys five seconds, I'll allow you, click subscribe down below and join my channel. Um, I'm only just joking, but I'm a fourth year medical student studying at King's College London and also biomedical science graduates. You guys honestly showed me so much love in the last video where I told you guys and spoke to you guys about the less kind of glamorous side of medicine and the things that I hate about being a medical student. So I thought it's only fair to follow up with another one of these videos, show you guys the other side of being a medical student and in this video, I'll be talking to you guys about everything that I hate about doctors. But don't get me wrong, I absolutely love medical school and I cannot wait to be a doctor. And in 99% of cases, and honestly in the vast majority of cases, doctors are amazing, they're kind, they're caring. And here in the NHS, the majority of doctors I meet are the sorts of doctors that I would want to treat my family. But there is a flip side to this. There are a small minority of cases, and I do say again, a small minority of cases where there are some doctors that make me feel like, um, you know, I don't really like placement, make me feel like I'm wasting my time, and maybe being on placement genuinely quite difficult and that's exactly what I want to tell you guys about in this video. I get there are times where doctors might not be able to teach especially during these COVID times I do get there are times where doctors not able to teach. I get that sometimes doctors may not necessarily be in the mood they may have something going on in their personal lives that may affect their ability to teach or maybe some doctors just don't have the sort of personality to you know to kind of engage in teaching in the way that um, I might want uh, to be taught but if you're a doctor and you're not in that unique circumstance then maybe there's something that we can do about it. So the reason that I'm making this video is honestly not to spread negativity and not talk down on this amazing profession it's just to raise awareness of how some medical students feel while they're on placement and if you're watching this and you're in some sort of healthcare profession then maybe we can do something about this and maybe hopefully better the future generations to come and lastly also if you're thinking about going to medical school then hopefully this video will prepare you about what you may come across on your clinical placements so let's go ahead and get started so let me start by setting the scene all right so sometimes yeah i wake up at 6 30 in the morning i might be really really tired from yesterday's shift but yeah, I wake up at 6.30 in the morning, I drive to the hospital and I show up at the hospital at 7.45 in the morning. This honestly happens. I get there at 7.45 in the morning and I greet the doctor. I'm super inspired to learn. I'm super kind of looking forward to learn and, meet, uh, and kind of speak to patients and meet this doctor. And within the first few minutes of speaking to this doctor, it's very, very clear that they have no interest in teaching me. They have no interest in me being there. And it's quite clear they do not want me there. Honestly, sometimes there are doctors who don't even want to like address you, kind of not your presence and that can really really affect your motivation to want to continue you know on with this day and keep learning in the specialty although this is rare when this does happen I just stand there and think why am I here like I have so many exams to prepare for so much work to do I've come here for you know 7 45 in the morning and I'm just like why am I here what really should happen if it is possible is, is you should straight away be invited into the kind of consultation room by the doctor you know greet the person introduce each other and then be invited in to you know help look after the patient and at the same time be taught by the doctor and make sure that your time is valuably used. You should be made to feel like it is your right to be here, you should be part of the team and it's your responsibility to be here, look after patients and most importantly make sure that you're learning so that in the future you can look after the patients yourself. So it really really is upsetting sometimes when you show up and you're treated in such a way and you have to be with a doctor who doesn't necessarily want you there from 9 to 5 p.m. What I don't understand is the fact that you were once a medical student, you know exactly what it was like to be in my position because you were in my position you probably came across doctors that did the exact same thing to you. So why is it okay to do this to someone else? Has it truly been that long since you've been a medical student that you've forgotten what it feels like to be in my position? So that for me is what I find really, really difficult sometimes. And as I mentioned, it is really in the minority of cases. In the vast majority of cases, you meet an amazing doctor who comes in, wants to teach you, wants to look after you and teaches you so much. And you walk home thinking, oh my God, I've had an absolutely amazing day and I just can't wait to be a doctor. So this again is in the minority of cases. Okay, the next Next thing that I really don't like about some doctors, again, in the minority of cases, is getting roasted. Now, day to day on your life as a medical student, you go into hospital, you know, you'll be expected to know things. The doctors will ask you questions, test your knowledge on the specialty, make sure they're up to date with all of your kind of theory behind everything, and you will be tested. And on a normal, usual day, I'd say, I normally get around maybe 80% of the questions correct and maybe 20% of the questions wrong. Now, there honestly are times where I am a bit of an idiot and I say something stupid or I completely forget something that I definitely should know. And maybe I do deserve a little bit of a telling off. But there are some times where a doctor will ask me a super niche question in their 
specialty which I definitely like there's no way in hell that I will ever know the answer to this question or sometimes I may just be a bit nervous or maybe it's just you know a bit early in the morning and I make a mistake and I answer a question stupidly or I just don't know the answer to something that I should know that does happen from time to time what I really don't like is that when this does happen from time to time getting roasted in front of the whole entire team and being made to feel um, stupid you know for not knowing a particular answer this is something that has happened to me quite a few times now let's give you guys an example of what I mean there was this one day where I was on placements in general surgery and I was in the surgical uh, theater with all of the doctors and I was asked the question uh, and, it, and to be fair it was a question I should have known the answer to at my level of training and I was asked this question and I was a bit nervous it was my first time actually being in theater and I gave um, you know quite a stupid answer and that doctor made sure that for a whole entire five minutes he was going to make sure that I knew that that was a stupid answer. You know, I was absolutely roasted in front of the whole entire team and made to feel quite small. I was given a five minute lecture on how I'm in med school. You know, this is an easy answer. I should know this answer. Why haven't I, you know, revised this answer? Why haven't I looked at the theory of this thing? And that made me feel so bad. And I went home just feeling so horrible about myself and feeling quite stupid when honestly, I shouldn't have felt that way. You know, we all make mistakes, especially if you're in your second, third year of medical school, you know, whatever year of medical school you're in, you're not expected to know everything and you are, allowed to make mistakes and that's how we learn as medical students that's how we get better and if you're in your second year of medical school third year medical school and it's your first time going to the hospital you will be quite nervous and when you're put on the spot you know ask questions from the whole entire team that can be quite scary and that is exactly like how i felt and i wasn't able to answer a question that i normally would have answered on a normal occasion as long as we're being safe you know passing our exams showing up to placement and being better every single day that is ex essentially what matters so that one day we can be good doctors and improve on our mistakes we should should not be made to feel you know stupid or inferior or unintelligent for making a mistake and answering a question stupidly you know that should not happen we should never ever be made to feel you know stupid for not giving the right answer and for a while after that scenario it took me a while to recover from that and develop the confidence again in myself to answer questions out loud and prove to myself that I'm not this idiot that I was described to be that I'm actually you know better than that and I just made a mistake so getting roasted is the worst thing I ever and again it only happens in a very small minority of cases but it's something that you know you definitely have to you know know about before starting medical school the next and the last thing that i don't like about a small minority of doctors is arrogance now there's a small subset of doctors who will think they're better than you i received an email the other day actually from a midwife who you know wrote a long paragraph about how some medical students and doctors can make you feel inferior and that definitely is the case again in a small subset of doctors and these are for reasons such as maybe they know more than you they may earning a lot more money than you they're more specialized than you they're further in their training than you like i don't honestly don't know why but these are some reasons as to why some doctors will think that they're better than you and they'll really make that apparent when they speak to you <laughs> what really does annoy me in these cases is that i do have a degree as well and i'm probably the same age as you and even if i didn't have a degree even if i was five ten years younger than you i'm still human i still have an intrinsic worth an intrinsic value in myself regardless of who i am how much money i earn you know what degree i've done how specialized i am despite all of those different characteristics that you might have that I don't I still deserve to be respected I still do deserve your time and I don't deserve to be treated with the arrogance that you might show me a good example of this is again going back to the theater um, it was one of my first days in the hospital in theater similar kind of period of time as the last story I told you but I walked into the theater room and um, I was really nervous about going to the theater but I spoke to the surgeon and the surgeon said to me that they're more than happy to have me um, you know kind of um, watch the surgery and be present I then went to get a coffee in the meantime and when I came back I bumped into the anesthetist at the entrance and he said you know who are you and what are you doing here and I quickly exp uh, explained who I am and I said you know I'm a second year medical student and I've come to shadow if that's okay with you and I've spoken to the lead surgeon and they've also said that it's okay for me to, to kind of shadow the surgeon uh, if that's okay and straight away like I honestly do not understand why or like what happened but the anesthetist started shouting at me straight away saying I don't care who you've seen or who you've spoken to I am the lead anesthetist here and no one comes into this room without my consent without my will so if you want to attend this surgery then you have to ask me nicely and you know being shouted at for such a like a random thing that I had no idea like what was going on and why it sparked you know the, the need to shout at me you know that level of arrogance was something that really kind of put me off from theaters for quite a while because I didn't understand what was going on you know I was a second year medical student at the time and my first time in theaters I didn't know like what was going on and being talked to with such arrogance really did affect me for a little while again I want to highlight this was in a minority of cases I kind of overcame this incident I went back into theaters and I had the most amazing time I met the most amazing surgeons and 
and you know you can go see my videos I made on my time in theaters and you know delivering a baby but this is something that may happen to you from time to time and it's really important to raise awareness again to hopefully prevent this from happening in the future for future generations all right so to kind of wrap up the video I wrote down a few points on my advice on how to deal with these situations if they do happen to you the first is don't take it personally and don't take it to heart if a doctor or a healthcare professional treats you in a way that you don't deserve to be treated it's not about you they may be going through a difficult day through a difficult time and you know may not understand you and it's not your fault so the first thing is don't take it personally and don't take it to heart the next tip i want to give you guys is to be forgiving you know go home and first of all forgive yourself for any mistake you may have um, you know done for example not knowing the answer to the question and secondly be forgiving to the person who you know wasn't kind to you some people People just have bad days some people might be going through a divorce or a really tough time you know they may be going through something difficult but maybe tomorrow they'll come back they'll you know kind of overcome this problem and be a better person the third and probably the most important tip I can give you is that if you're with someone who is not helpful does not want to teach you and makes that clear spend a bit of time there take what you can and leave you know as long as you're you don't get in trouble as long as it's okay leave straight away and go find something you know more useful to do like you know study in the library shadow a different doctor maybe and leave as long as you're allowed to when I was in my earlier years in medical school, like in my second and third year of medical school, if I came across a doctor who didn't want to teach me and I just didn't find it very beneficial, I would stay there from nine to five. These days, within the first kind of five, 10 minutes, I know what, what kind of interaction we're gonna have. I'll stay there for a little bit and I'll leave and go find something more useful in my time, as long as I'm allowed to, of course. The next thing I wanna say is that if you're not getting the kind of education you want and someone's not treating the way you may necessarily like, speak up, you know, go speak to your clinical supervisor or your educational supervisor and tell them that, you know, to be honest with you, the last couple of days, I haven't really found this department useful and here is the reason why. If you speak up, your supervisor might actually be able to put you with a different doctor or put you in a different area of the department where you might actually benefit from. So really, really is important to speak up. The next tip I can give you guys is to always be respectful. If a doctor or another healthcare professional isn't treating you in the way that you deserve, always be respectful towards them. And I kind of have this quote that I heard and it's so, so important. And it says, don't ever let an asshole make you an asshole. Pardon my French, but what I mean by that is never let someone who's going through a bad day ruin your day and make you do this to someone else. And that honestly applies for all parts of life. You know, never let an asshole make you an asshole is a phrase I live by. So be respectful to them and hopefully, you know, once they get through what they're getting through, they'll come back and you may realize that actually they are a nice person. They're just going through a difficult time. And lastly, and again, one of the most important tips I have for you guys is don't let that be you. Always remember where you started. Always remember where you came from. Always remember that you two were once a junior, was once a student. So when you see a medical student or a nursing student or whoever in the future, make sure you are kind to them. Make sure you make them feel comfortable. And let's try and make a future generation that is happy, that is helpful, and that are all inspired to teach other people. I have made myself the promise that as soon as I become a doctor in you know, just over a year from now, I will make sure to always, always, always be nice to medical students, be nice to nursing students, midwives, treat them with kindness and care, and make sure that I make a difference in their education so that when they do become a doctor as well, they'll be able to do really, really well and also help teach other people. So that is the end of the video, guys. I hope I haven't come across too negative and I hope you guys have taken away something from this video. And again, showing you guys the other side to medicine and the other side that definitely comes with being a medical student. If you guys have any suggestions as to what I should do in the future, then please let me know down below the comments. Please make sure you're subscribed as well and please stay two seconds of your day to make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Thank you so much, guys, and I'll see you guys on the next one.